Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Karsha Gobbin. Hello, this is welcome to the channel. My name is Karsha Gobbin. Hello, this is welcome to the channel. My name is Karsha Gobbin. Hello, this is welcome to the channel. My name is Karsha Gobbin. Hello, this is welcome to the channel. My name is Karsha Gobbin. Hi, let's try to do that again. <laughs> Hi, my name is Karsh Goblin. Welcome to the channel. Um, this is Goblin Cave TV, and that was a bouncing um, audio, of course, because we are totally professionals here. And I was just mentioning that we don't do the whole highly scripted YouTube style video. Um, my background is circus, so I do everything live, and mistakes are still part of the show and that's probably not going to get edited out so oh um what happened there is i was monitoring my own well um i had to copy the um um the website address of the channel and it wasn't muted and i didn't close that after i copied it and that's exactly what happened then <laughs> so anyway um, as per normal, we have the amazing Sirenscape audio in the background that you can hear. We are playing um, the seedy tavern the Drunken Blard is in. Um, or Drunken Bard is Drunk. And that's the audio that we're hearing. Um, it's the nicer audio than that reverb. Than the, 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 yeah. Anyway. So today we are looking at this Fantasy Age, the basic rule book. Um, and this book um, is it. Um, I have, it's one of those games for me where I, it's been in the background, but never been in the forefront. So I've never gotten my hands on it. I've actually owned, you don't hear the music. It should be coming through. I do. I don't hear. Okay. So some people are hearing, some people aren't. It is there. I'll just turn up just a little bit, but I do have it live. I don't have my headphones in, so I don't want it bouncing on into the mic either. So, as I said, um, this is one of the um, the games which has, again, always been in the background. And there's been a while, a few of these, but I haven't really got my hands on it, or I haven't really had the time to really um, go into it very much. So, it's a good book. It's a generic system, and I like generic systems, because you can move it to, every, you can move it to everything. I've had the modern age version of this for a while, and I also had, I was a Kickstarter of the expanse which is also based on the fan or based on the age system and the age is the age is the system um so it's a really nice system it's very adaptable and it's got some really amazing parts to it which is what we're going to get into today so the system itself and the basic core of the system is you're rolling 3d6 plus your modifier versus a target number so what's the target number? DC. Um, most people call it a difficulty class, DC, etc. Um, difficulty number is also, DN is also being used, but target number has also been used for a few games, which I've seen. So instead of rolling D20, you're rolling 3D6. Um, you're not adding skills to this. Um, you're just adding a um, attribute, and there can be other modifiers as well, but we'll get into that in a moment. Um, the other part is, is that doubles trigger um, a special event. So instead of having a critical being 1 in 5 chance, 1 in 20, um, you're doing anything that's a double. So if there's two sixes, great. If there's two ones, great. Um, but you still have to succeed your roll. Um, and one of those dice is called your stunt dice. That's always a different color. So that might be a lot to take in. But it's not that hard to understand. You're just rolling 3d6. One of them is a different colour. You're looking for doubles. As well as you're looking for high numbers to succeed your test against the target number. Target numbers are going to be around 11 for like normal-ish roll. Up to 13 or 15 etc. They go up higher and higher etc. Easy will be 9. Normal is about 11. And it goes to like challenge just a little bit more challenging, would be 13. So there, that's your range you're looking for in those roles. Your modifiers aren't going to be as high as something like a Dungeons & Dragons game, and certainly not as high as 
a Pathfinder game, we're looking at plus ones, plus twos, maybe plus three at max. Yes, you can get higher than plus three, but we're looking more realistically normal rolls, only having like plus one, two or three. You can get minuses. Your ability scores can have minuses to them. So we'll get into that in a moment as well <laughs> with when we go through ability scores. But that's your basic system. So you're looking for doubles and doubles trio is something called stunts. Stunts are some really interesting things. Um, instead of doing a, oh my god, I've got a critical success on a combat roll, double damage. It doesn't have to be double damage. It could be a faster reload. You could actually get a free reload. You could choose a, you could like change, like do another attack, or you could do other things to that. Um, and that's the important part. It's being unique with your abilities, with your criticals, and being able to alter them. And we're going to get into stunts. Um, I've got a list of things. Which is, this is one of the few videos where we've actually got a list of what we're talking about because there's so much good stuff in here. So, as I said, I do have the Fantasy Age book. I also picked up the Fantasy Age Companion. Um, this is an add-on. It has extra rules, extra bits and pieces. Um, and it's got extra spells, extra races, um, subclasses, etc. Um, I picked up the Beastry. Um, so, um, things are getting serious if I picked up three books. And I even picked up, um, the Fantasy Age GM screen. So this isn't just a GM screen. Um, it's also a, it's more of a GM's kit or Games Master's kit where it gives you the combat tracker, um, where whiteboard markers can be used and erased easily. It's got your actions. So it's got two of these, one for your players, one for yourself. Um, it's got your stunts as well, one for your players, one for yourself. So it's a really good um, kit, and I'd recommend it because, um, like, if you're playing, it's nice to have those things for yourself and those things around the table just for people to do a quick reference for their characters. And there's enough there for it to spread on a big table as well. So I, I like that idea. I think it's a really good one. I didn't expect all that to be in there. But when I picked it up, I went, yeah, that's cool. Very much worth it. So um, this is not sponsored material. <laughs> None of this is sponsored. I started getting into this in a big way, and it's like, this is really cool. Um, so this is, is really cool. It's, it's not really like a board game. Um, it's like I would class it as a rules medium game. Um, and by rules medium, I put things like Dungeons and Dragons, and maybe Pathfinder 2 into the rules medium. Pathfinder 1 I'll put into rules um, rules heavy, like a rules heavy game. Um, so it's not super hard. It'll feel familiar. It will really definitely feel familiar as a role playing game. You're just using 3d6 instead of d20s. Um, and let's get into the bits and pieces. So um, we've gone through the core. Um, and of course, oh sorry, as a normal disclaimer, um, we use a about a 10%, 20% shade on our PDF just because the white PDFs are really bright and they are not good for my eyes. I don't like them myself. So I do that over the shade so you can see the differences between the one down here and the one over there. That's about the difference of the same book. Okay, so um, the attributes. And we're going to skim through the book to find the attributes because I don't, because silly me, I didn't actually have them placed. Um, there we go. So... There are nine attributes instead of what most people would use of six. Um, so when you're making a character, you roll 3d6 nine times, um, one for each one. You compare it to the table, which is on screen here, um, this one up here, and that's how you get your pluses and minuses. Once that's done, that's all you care about, those pluses and minuses. You just get rid of the 3d6 roll. And it's just that minus two to plus four. That's all we care about. The rest of it can be thrown away. But because of how it works, you can convert other games. So Pathfinder, uh, anything that's based off that 3.5, oh sorry, everything that's based from the Dungeons and Dragons 3rd edition, which is your Pathfinder, um, and even 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons, can be converted to this system because it became an open system um, in Dungeons and Dragons 3rd edition. So... It works. And if you roll poorly, well, you've got a minus two on a stat. It's not that bad. 
It's just when you do rolls on that, you have minus two against that action. You can still be okay. You're not really over the top affected. You've only got a minus two to three D to a three D six roll. It's not that bad. And an average number is one. So eleven on that three D six roll for you determining your abilities is a, is one. So it's not that bad to have a minus two against a plus one. It's it's yeah. Um, and I like games as well, which will give you that ability to have a flaw, and it's really not that bad a flaw. You're not suffering too much. Um, so that's that's how you determine them, but you've got nine abilities instead of your normal six. So what are they? They are accuracy, communication, focus, or sorry, communication, constitution, dexterity, fighting, intelligence, perception, strength, and willpower. So, if you can have a look at the part across here, um, we've got here what we've got. So, these this is pretty much what they're about. So, accuracy, you've got arcane blast, bows, black power to brawling. So, these are the focuses. Um, so, you don't actually have skills in the game. You've only got your attributes, your nine attributes as your core um, parts, but you then can have focuses which give you a plus two. So, if you get a focus on, say, axes, then you'll have plus two to that axe attack anytime you're using axes. Um, if you have the focus, put a focus into climbing, you get a little bit better into climbing. So, it does help out. Um, you get these pretty much every level. Every level, well, we'll talk about when we get leveling, but you do get them every level, so you can expand and expand and expand as you go there. So, what's the difference between fighting and strength? Well, strength is strength. Um, it's just purely strength. Fighting is more the fighting style of things. So, um, fighting, the specializations is talking about axes, bludgeonings, heavy blades, lances, pole arms, etc. But when it comes to um, strength, we're talking about climbing, driving, um, intimidation, jumping, might, smithing. So, physical strength is now more of a physical thing, which is what it should be. Fighting is a separate part. The total, so I'm, I'm totally separate. I, sorry, I've crossed over here. So yeah, fighting is a separate part. So it's a totally different thing um, from, yeah. So accuracy is separated from um, dexterity. Normally in your normal, normally when you have like only three of those attributes, you would have accuracy and dexterity as the same thing. But in this, it's a separate totally totally separate part and I don't mind that I think that's a really good idea I think it would work really well perception as well is separate um, is you essentially the other new one that you've got there um, so as I said you don't actually have skills you have focuses you pretty much get them every level um, and they can they give you that plus two so whenever that's whenever that's applicable you have that to that role, add that to the role as another modifier to your attribute and it helps you pass the roles. It also later on can add to that different colored dice. So that different colored dice is called your stunt dice um, and we'll get to that right now. So with your stunts, um, you're wanting to get your doubles, right? So if you pass a check, if there's any doubles out of those 3d6, um, you have triggered a stunt and stunts have a multitude of different effects and different very degrees of success as well. So that third dice, the different colored one, actually tells you how much stunt dice or how much stunt points you get. So if you roll a one, yes, you passed. And so if you roll a one on that with a stunt dice, so if you triggered the stunt and you've only got one stunt dice, you don't get to do as much with it. But if you have five or six, you can do much more with it. So we're going to go over to a um, a PDF which someone made up of just the stunts, which is really, really cool. So we'll go up to the top one. So combat stunts. So they've got a SP on the side. Um, that is your stunt points. So that's your different colored dice. So if you've rolled and you've passed the success and you've got doubles, you then look at the different colored number. Even if that different colored number is one of that doubles, doesn't matter. 
but you're looking at the number there. If it's a one, you could choose to go stay aware, um, or you could do a rapid reload. You can immediately reload a missile weapon. And some of these, some of the missile weapons, you really want to reload quickly um, because they take a lot of time. So something like that would be really good. Or you can move yourself um, to, so you can move yourself or a target um, two yards in any direction, um, essentially spending your um, stunt point to move two yards. Or you can move, like, if every two yards you do, you can spend plus one stunt point. You can do multiple stunt points. Um, so if you roll five or six, you could choose to do a rapid reload and a disarm. Or a rapid reload and a taunt, or a threaten. So you can do lots of different bits and pieces and combinations. Some of them you can only do once. Um, most of them you can only do once. Some do specifically say you can do this per time, like the um, skirmish, where you can keep moving. Um, so every stunt point that you spend, you can move two yards. Um, but you can do multiple different things with these. And it's not just for attack. So the fun part is it's not just for attack. So we use um, we use critical deck for our um, our guard's tail show, which is based in Pathfinder Second Edition. And this is essentially you're choosing the deck, you're choosing what thing to trigger in that critical deck, and it works really well. But those critical decks are only for combat. What happens when you have other ways of doing it? So your exploration when you're searching. You can get stunt points for searching. You can do it quickly. Um, you can go, oh, that makes me wonder. You immediately make another perception test at no additional cost or time or resources to discover more information about the, the surroundings. So you can like do other things like that. Or the upper hand, you discover a lead that... Um, um, if your discoveries lead to combat within the moment... Within a moment or two, you receive plus three initiative. So you get your ex explore, sorry, exploring, and you're trying to search for someone that may be sneaking. And if you get, um, if you get three stunt points from that, um, you can go, uh, sorry, four actually. You can have the upper hand in the combat because you spotted them, and now you have the upper hand. So you can you can transfer these around and stuff, and they work really well. And you can also do role-playing stunts, which I like, but they're kind of weird. <laughs> like, they take a bit to get used to. Um, so, floating is a combat stunt. Oh, sorry, is a role-playing stunt. I don't know how much I like that or not. Um, I like the enraging one. So, you can twist a knife delivering provocative, a provocative, sorry, provocation or insult in such a way that a single target you designate must choose between either attacking you or storming away from the scene. If you choose, so if they choose to attack, it may not be deadly. It might just be a slap um, or a punch instead. Um, so you can put these into that as well. So you can try to trigger a guard to attack you first, or in a, say a barroom fight, you can try to start the fight with somebody, and that can be in itself. An amazing thing. Um, the other part, the last of the stunts, so we've done combat, exploration and role playing, there's also spells. So you can alter your spells as well if you get a stunt happening. Um, so as again, it's not just adding damage. Yes, there's lethal, you can add extra damage to it if you have five, but there's other things. You can split the spell. Um, you can also essentially give yourself a magic shield um, like the shield spell which gives you plus two to defense which is actually really good um, and it costs you nothing um, <laughs> so these little things are really really cool and they can add to things and you don't have to have one of them if you roll high enough you can split m smaller parts of that into different things um, so that can work really well and I, I like this I really really like this and it means there's more diversity to you're going to get more essentially stunts um, because you're only doing you only need 
you only need um, the doubles out of 3d6 compared to 5% um, so like the 1 in 20 which is a 5% chance so you're going to get them far more often than your normal 1 in 20 and they're far more diverse and they have far more diversity when it comes to combat to role playing to everything um, and it can really change how things work it makes it dynamic um, I think it's a it's a nice effect. I think it's a really cool thing that they do. Um, so that's stunts. So what happens when shit gets real and you got to end combat? Well, um, initiative's pretty basic, pretty simple. You're rolling a dex check essentially, and the highest is the highest amount is better. And it's a cyclic, so every round it goes through the same order. You don't re-roll it. Um, so that's how that's what happens with combat. Also, um, have we got that? Oh no, we'll we'll talk on that in a moment. Um, yeah. So yeah, in combat. Oh, what's that? There we go. So <laughs> that was my notes. Um, so yes. So combat. If this stuff gets real, um, there's actually an action time. It's not called combat. It's called action time. Um, and the GM calls for action time. So what happens then is you roll for initiative. It's essentially dex, um, and then the highest goes first, and then goes down. If there's a tie, the person with the highest stunt dice goes higher, etc. Um, that's always the the stunt dice, that different coloured dice, is always the tiebreaker. Which kind of works. Well, most of the time at least. Um, so, you go down through the order, yep, sure. Um... But the action economy is pretty simple. You have one minor action, one major action, that's it. Or you can choose two minor actions. And the actions aren't too bad. They're quite interesting. Um, so we've got another PDF, which is uh, made up for us. Um, just for reference to make sure it's easy to remember. Um, so major actions, you can do an all-out attack. You can get a plus one to hit, but you have a minus one to be attacked. Not too bad. Um, you can charge to get that plus one to um, hit. You can defend yourself. You can choose... Um, so you can concentrate on defending yourself, um, getting a plus two to defense. Um, you can heal. Um, healing's important for first aid. Um, you can do a melee attack, just your normal standard melee attack. Yep. Um, I like how everything's in yards instead of feet. So anything within two yards of you, which is six feet if you're going feet, um, two yards is threatened area. And your movement's in yards as well, so I, I actually like that. Um, I hate feet as a movement, as a distance measurement, it doesn't work. Yards is at least close to one meter. 90% um, of one meter, almost. So um, you can do a normal attack for melee, normal range attack. You can run for double, you can cast spells, although some are deferrable speed for your spells. Um, and you can reload. Again, some reloads are shorter, um, some are longer. So that's your majors. Um, for your minors, you can activate an item, say potion, etc. Um, you can aim. So I like that you can spend one action, or your minor action is aiming, and then you can fire for your major action. That's a pretty cool one. So you can get an, a plus one to attack there. You can guard up. You can add plus one or plus two to your defense. Um, but everything after that, you have minus one or minus two. So if you want plus two to your defense, great. But you're going to have minus two to all things after that for that round. Or you can do one plus one for your defense. And get plus. So you get a minus one to everything after that. I like how that's kind of useful, and it's uh, like it's dynamic in how it can be used. Um, a lot of things are very black and white. This one, I just remembered, I've got it on screen there. Um, so this one has like that dynamic part of it. So you can prepare um, something. Um, like first aid actually needs you to prepare your stuff, like your bandages. You need to have them out and prepared. Um, some Bits and pieces like spells might need preparation, um, other things like that. You can press the attack. I like this one because it's a minor action, 
Um, and if someone flees from you, you automatically follow them. So you automatically trigger that following the attack. Um, but you need to actually say, I'm pressing the attack as your minor action. So you need to state that one. You need to actually spend your minor action to press the attack just in case they flee. Um, you can ready in action, of course, um, or you can stand firm. So if anyone tries to either knock you over or push you back, and there's abilities to do such things, you can actually force, like, you can actually be prepared for that. Um, so I think it's pretty cool. One thing I don't like, it doesn't have something like a, um, um, like, it has charge as an attack, but it doesn't have um, a ready, like, not ready for the, like, ready for the charge. So that was always a dynamic. So older systems had charges as, as a part of, like, as an option for attacking, um, but they always had a prepare for charge as an option for defense. Um, so things like spears, you'd ready for that charge, and if someone charged at you when you had a spear, they're in for a heck of a lot of hurt. Because things like spears, if they did hit, they will do double damage. And that goes off before the charge attack hits you. So that was the only thing. So that's something I found that was missing. Um, but it's not it's just a small little thing for me because I like I still have that in my mind from other systems. Um so the action economy isn't too bad. It's as I said, one major, one minor or two minors, and that's what you get. Um, so it's, it's less complex, you don't have three actions, you don't have all the other bits and pieces, uh, it gets complicated. Um, it's quite a, very, quite a simple system when it comes to that. Um, so the races, pretty damn generic. So you have your dwarf, elf, gnome, halfling, human, um, and there's an orc as well, and pretty much the benefits are what you would expect. There's nothing that really stood out as something, oh my god, um, they're all pretty generic, they're all pretty simple, and it, as I said, it's what you'd expect in a fantasy setting. Um, now, one thing that's, so we've got this one, um, Sun's Action Economy, okay, races, okay, so social, cl social classes and background, um, this is something that really stuck me, is that it's ran, it's actually um, rolled randomly. So if you wanted to be a knight, if you wanted to be like a noble, well, you might roll badly. So I can see this, I like, generally I like random rolls when it comes to making up a character. It means you have to work with what you've got. Um, this is probably one of the ones I wouldn't like it to be totally random. Um, and as the GM, you could say, okay, we're doing this and everyone's going to be noble or everyone's going to be from the streets and lower. Or you could be lower and middle and that's it. You could put caps on things. So you do have that. I, I said, it's one of the one of the roles which I probably wouldn't have it as a role um, because a lot of the parts are chosen instead of rolled. Um, so you have outsider, lower back, lower class, middle class and upper, and then you roll again to different parts in that. So you could be a criminal, so an outsider, criminal, exile, hermit, pirate, radical or wanderer, or you could have something like an upper class where you have an apprentice, a, dig, a dilettante, a noble, official, scholar or squire. So again, it, I don't really like that. I, this was probably one of the ones I would, I would probably push for choice rather than um, rather than random rolls, um, because this, that's kind of important parts. Um, so we'll go to classes. One thing that struck me as a, as something which really was different, because remember, this is a generic system. This is to be adapt. This is so you can build your own worlds. This is a system for you to do your homebrews from or adapt other world settings um, to this system if you don't like the setting or if you don't like the system but really love the setting. So what got me was the classes. There's three and only three. Now first when I looked at it I was like wait a sec where is everything? Where's the bits and pieces? But then I looked deeper and um, there's rogue, fighter, 
or so rogue, warrior, and mage. But where's the cleric? But the mage can also do healing, and the mage is just a generic spell caster. He's not just a wizard or a mage or etc. It just means spell caster. And it doesn't say how you get the spell casting. It leaves that open to interpretation. It leaves that open to any setting. So it could be your focus could be a staff. It could be a wand. It could be a pendant. It could be a holy symbol. These are things which could just be how your setting works. And it does talk about that, which I think is really good. It's really important for a setting to have, like for a game which is built for any setting, to allow you to go, okay, this is how the setting is going to be. And it leaves it open for interpretation. So for a wizard or mage or whatever you want to call it, the spellcaster class, um, they start with only two focuses, so two spell focuses. Um, and that's, so what that is, is like, you can have like, say, fire or healing, or um, if you have the companion, necromancy, or death, um, and other bits and pieces, like lightning is one of the focuses. So you start with one of those, or so you start with two of those, actually. And um, so each one of those, at first, or at the novice setting, um, gives you two spells. So when you start out, you have four spells total. Doesn't sound like much, but you do get a little bit more. There's not a huge amount of spells. We're not talking about hundreds of different types of spells, like in D&D 2nd Edition, or I think there's probably under 100 for 5th um, Edition um, for D&D, but you do not talking about a huge variety, but the spells are fairly adaptable, they're fairly powerful, and they kind of work. Um, the other thing is, is that um, we'll talk about magic later specifically, um, but they... Each of, they're each very unique, um, but we'll talk, as I said, we'll talk about magic in a moment. Um, before we get to magic, um, one thing, like, one before we get to that, um, leveling and health. So your class determines how much hit points you have. Even a mage, I think, has, like, 20 hit points plus a d6 plus con. Um, a fighter gets maybe, I think it's 30 hit points plus d6 plus con. So it's not a huge, like you get, you already start out with quite a bit and there's not a huge variation between them. Um, so we go here. So yes, mage gets a 20 hit health constitution plus d6. Um, warrior gets um, 30 plus constitution plus d6. And our thief or a rogue is, there we go, um, 25 constitution plus um, plus D6. So when you level up, I'm just going to go up here. So when you're leveling up, um, you get D6 plus con as extra health. Yay! So you're not going to go up a huge amount. You're not doing like D12s. You're just getting D6 plus con. D6 plus con. That's for any class. Um, so they're all going up the same amount. So uh, in theory, if the fighter keeps rolling ones, eventually a mage character that keeps rolling sixes with high con can pass it. Um, but even con, like, we're talking about, like, plus one, two, three, four. That's it. You Like, four is your max plus. And that's an 18 only. So, really do you want to put so much con in there when it could be used elsewhere? I don't know. Um, that would be, like, long-term playing, figuring out how those mechanics really come into the fore. But you're starting off with like 20, 25 or 30 as your base. Then you have your D6s and cons. So that's not too bad. Um, so yes, you, that, you get your health, um, your D6 plus con health. Um, when you advance, um, you get an ability. So you get a plus one to your abilities. Now, these are... They're, they're dynamic. So if you have one of those minuses, um, so if you have like a minus two or minus one, they're, they're easier to remove with this um, ability advancement. Though if you have, say, like a 17, it'll take three advancements to get to 18. Um, so there's a dynamic part there, um, which is a little bit of a, 
a little bit of annoyance, but I can see how they've made it. Um, and again, it's only a once per level. Like you, it only comes in when you come have your level up. So it's not a huge big issue. Um, so you don't have to think about it every now and then. It's not a, okay, now I've got to think about this and that and that. It's, it's a table which you have to refer to maybe if you're going up a level for that once per level. It's not that big a deal. Um, so you also get, um, oh sorry, there's another part of it which I liked. Um, your ability advancement is also kind of um, restricted. So every class has four primary abilities and five secondary abilities out of, out of the nine. And so when you do have your ability advancement, um, in even numbers, it's for your primary ability. For odd numbers, it's for your secondary ability. So both of them are forced to, to move up. You can't just focus on your primary stats. You do have to work on your, your other ones as well. And I like that. I like that. Um, and it's the same where when you level up, you, when you go up another level, you get a new focus. Again, even numbers, it's your primary ability. Odd numbers, it's your secondary ability. So that's a nice one as well. So you have to pick up skills which you might not be good at. Um, but a focus gives you plus two to something. So it actually can help out if you do have the, some minus to your stats or to areas which you don't really, like, they will just help round out your character, really. Um, I mean, I've always wanted a fighter which had um, stealth, but it never really worked. So here's a bit where, oh, I have to choose a skill which is not my primary ability. Hmm. Let's try, let's pick up some stealth. <laughs> so those focuses only go up the, like you only choose them once and they give you a plus, plus two to your, to that role when it's specifically applicable. Um, at high levels, say at plus, I think at 11, you can get an extra one on top of that. So you can spend another, another focus to raise that up by one. So the focus goes from two to then three. So, um, that's kind of a thing as well. And also something I miss mentioned as well, uh, missed mentioning, I should say, is that if you have a focus, um, at six level and higher, that can, that focus, that plus two focus, um, when you're using it, adds to your stunt dice. So if you're focusing on something, if you're using something which you have a focus on, um, and you get your you get a stunt, you have plus two to that, whatever you roll on your stunt dice. So you get to use it more often. So figuring out what stunts or what focuses to have is actually really important because it will be used more often. Like if, you, if you're using it a lot, it means you get more power for your stunts when you trigger them. And I think it's going to be really cool that way. Um... And also you're going to trigger them a bit more often because you're going to be succeeding more often because you have that plus two to whatever's going on. Um, so that's leveling up. Um, again, it's a class system. It's a level system. Um, I, I, I actually enjoy classless systems. I enjoy leveler systems. But this is a, a nice rounded um, and well thought of class-based and level based system. I think it works well. And also when you're leveling up, you get more and more features from your class. Um, just like on more popular products like Dungeons and Dragons and things like um, Pathfinder 2, where you get stuff as you go up, like your, your classes give you a bit more and more abilities as you level up. Even though there's three classes though, they can be very diverse. You can play them so diversely and those classes also get specialities which again can move even in more different directions so you can have rogues which turn into like more dex based fighters um or swashbucklers um you can have elementalist mages which only focus on doing elemental damage um so you can really um real like you can really have multiple fighters in a group and they can all be totally different you can have multiple mages in a group and be totally different it doesn't really matter about, oh, you need one of this, one of this, and one of this. 
and I see that a lot in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition um, where you just don't have stacking classes but it can work I've been in lots of games where it can work I used to be in a group which had 10 players and stacking classes was a thing we would often have two fighters or two thieves two mages or wizards or two clerics was always a fun one um, so they can be diverse they can be played very differently and they can feel and look and everything comes across very differently even though they might be the same class because they have a different background or different feats or whatever you can be very very different um so i've totally missed on talents um, <laughs> but that's another um differentiation you can put into as well um talents are like brewing alchemy or being a blacksmith things like that those come from your class um there's class restrictions almost from them but it's they're quite open as well um but the last thing we want to talk about because we're trying to keep these as short as possible we've got an engine starting right behind me the last thing we want to talk about um is magic so generally for these i don't talk on magic i don't talk about character creation but that's all we're talking about is character creation and um and how different things are but in this magic is is kind of an interesting one as i said mages only get like very limited spells but there's more to that mages get magic points so magic points are very similar to um to heal to health points um whereas you get i think 10 plus will plus d6 something like that um that also goes up um per level as will plus d6 but um magic points are spent for to actually power your spells um so think of it like a computer game where you need to spend your magic points to to charge your spells awesome not all spells are built the same so some spells might take three some spells might take nine and so you've got to try to go, okay, I've got this many magic points per day. I've got to work within that amount of what I can cast. Um, you do get them back fairly easily. Um, they're not too bad. You can get them back not too, yeah. You can recover them. Um, so, but you have to spend them. And you also have to do a test to cast the spell. So... The tests are pretty much similar to how you do every other test. Each spell will have different tests, as in different numbers, etc. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's really cool. So even if you fail that test, those magic points are gone. So you can fail that test and spend your magic points and not get them back. Um, you can recover them at like a D6 per D6 plus willpower. If you meditate, etc., that's per hour, that is, and you get them all back from sleeping. But I like the fact that you have to spend them. You ha even if you fail the roll, you have to spend them. And the stunts can also come into that roll to cast. Um, so you can change things quite dramatically for that roll. Um, you can even alter the, the saving throws for the roll with the stunts, etc. Um, so I think the last part is healing. Um, health and dying so you're going to have around 30 40 health low levels um, they actually class one to one to five is like starting levels um, and then it goes up and then like their progression is quite interesting how they talk about it and it kind of works um, so first aid as I mentioned is an action is a major action in combat and it's an important one you're going to probably need it quite a bit because you die, you're dying at zero. Um, you're dying for as long as you have two plus sorry, two plus your con, which is might not be much. Um, so you might have a con of one, which is average, might be zero, um, might be minus one. So two plus minus one is one. You've got one round to administer first aid. Well, they're dead. Um, so it's bringing back that urgency of when someone goes down, you need to rush to them. You need to heal them. You need to, like, 
it's really important. Um, so, as I said, um, dying it's um, 2 plus con, unless healed. For healing, getting after a battle, just without doing a roll, you nat like it assumes naturally that you bandage up. So, assuming naturally that you bandage yourself up, you get 5 health back plus your con um, after any fight. Um, so that's not a bad idea. It's Instead of going, oh, um, I need to do a healing check and then going through the process of failing multiple upon multiple upon multiple healing checks, which has happened on many a game that I've played in, just to get like a little bit back, it just assumes, no, nope, you just bet you after your fight, you're bandaging up and you get some back. Um, I, I, I don't know if I like the amount they get back. I'd probably just say con or a d6 maybe. But it's their system. I haven't played it yet. I'd have to see how it works in game. It just to me it seems a lot. Um, and overnight healing you get back 10 plus your con and that's about it. Um, so that feels about right for an overnight. You're not getting everything back like some games do. Um, you're not getting just your level back and con but you're getting 10 plus your con that's not too bad so i don't mind that i think that works i just don't feel that the like getting five plus con back for after any combat any combat at all it doesn't do it doesn't feel right to me i would say maybe a d6 but that's my personal opinion i like the low lower lower healing games because it means combat's far more dangerous but when you also think that dying is at zero, not minus something, say minus 10 or minus constitution, or as soon as you go down to, to yeah, there's lots of different variations of it, but zero is dying, that's kind of a hard limit. Yeah, it kind of works, but I'd have to see in game. Um, so there are, it does also talk about, there's some good GM tips in here. Um, and also good world building tips and conversion tips. So, because this is a generic system, it was originally actually built for Dragon Age um, RPG, so the age in that. And this is the essentially the generic version of that, a step back to make it a generic system. It's then moved into Modern Age, which is what I'll be looking at at some point in the future, and The Expanse, which also uses the age system which again, I'll be looking at the future. Each one, each version has more things to add to it. Um, and I think this is really adaptable to pretty much anything you want. And if you're going to make a homebrew, uh, it's, it'd be a tough, it'd be a tough choice between BRP, basic role playing, which is the Chaos Systems version, um, the D100 system, which I like a lot. Um, I'm liking this as a lot a lot too. It'd be I mean not far below but but more so maybe possibly above the chaos isms. It's very, very close to or even may possibly above Chaos Isms version. I mean I bought up the not the entire um the book supply of what they have. I like everything they brought out for it. But I got a few of the bits and pieces. I've, I've never bought a beast tree for any of these games. I've never bought the companion or compendium or for these type of things, which I'll probably actually possibly do another video on the compendium for this. Um, I was just that impressed with the game. I wanted to learn more. Um, and the G Games Master's Kit is actually a really good Games Master's Kit. So if you're playing face-to-face -face in person, every person, like not every person, but you could have like the stunts, and stunts and like actions down one end of the table, stunts and actions down another end of the table. You have your screen which has everything anyway. And everyone's got access to all the material which they need to just play and have fun. I would say in play you'd need to learn those stunts. You'd need to get used to them. Because in combat you don't want to slow down too much. And it's the player narrative. When you use a stunt, you take over the narrative and you then say, okay, and this is what happens. And that's what happens. And it does this and this and this. Yes, of course, the gym can override. But um, it's your narrative when you're using stunts. Some of the things like the 
Um, oh, and one more thing um, is one of the um, the role playing ones where you discover more information. Sometimes the GM looks like there's no more information. That's it. You got everything. Like you're not doing that. Um, sometimes the GM just has to overall say no. But it does have some interesting stuff in there. Um, I think the stunts really make the system come alive. I'm interested to have a look at the Modern Age version. I do have the Modern Age basic book, but the Modern Age also has a setting as well. Um, and that's something I want to get my hands on to have a look at the setting because it's, le it's not just basic rules, but there's a setting that goes with it. So I'll be having a look at that as well. Um, and the Expanse, I've flicked through and it's like, there's far more because that's the latest edition of the age system. And every time they make it for a different setting, they build upon that system and add more. So everything I've seen in the Expanse is more than this, which is why I was like, I want to see where it started. I want to see Fantasy Age. I, I'm probably not going to go to the actual original Dragon Age because I'm not really a Dragon Age fan. Dragon Age is essentially like the, the computer game, Dragon Age. Um, so I'm not really a massive Dragon Age fan, but I might go back and have a look at that as well. So that's me for today. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for listening and putting up with me. Um, hopefully I've done this game justice. For those that have played it, tell me what you think. What are your experiences in the fantasy age? Um, the social media announcements that are like this is coming up for the channel have been like people just jumped on and went, yes, I played this. This is an amazing game. I've I've ran this for years and and it's like, really? Wow. Um, I've never experienced it. I think it's really useful. Like if you're doing homebrew, awesome. Um, I wouldn't mind having a look at some homebrews of this. I'm certainly de definitely looking at The Expanse because it's got the full campaigns password from the world. But this looks really cool for homebrew. Um, and you can take those different games to like the different bits and pieces to have more oh and actually one more thing um the stunts that you yeah, are in the book here are not all the stunts as well some monsters have their own stunts <laughs> i think that's awesome some monsters have their own stunts and even some weapons have their own stunts the grenade has a stunt linked to that called kaboom you have to spend one action minor action to prime the grenade if you don't use your major action to throw the grenade it's still primed so from that point on anyone that has a stunt on you can try to trigger the kaboom stunt which means it blows up in your hand that's freaking awesome i love it um that's really really awesome so there's also there's there's arquebuses in here too, so you can have gunslingers. There's like everything's diverse. If your campaign doesn't work with gunslingers or grenades, just take them off. Just remove them. Done. This is a game where the campaign like you choose the campaign, you choose what works for you, and then go. Yep. Yeah, okay. These are the rules we're going to work for, and that's kind of how basic role playing works. That's how this works. That's how generic systems work. I think there's a really really solid generic system more solid than refined systems um or um, setting based systems i think this is more solid than dungeon dragons um i i think it i think there's a much more solid version um the rules are the same from start to finish there's no exceptions it just works um there's continuity right through the entire system with the 3d6s um and the stunt dice is there and it's used for multiple different things. Like the stunt dice is used for how much you succeed in a roll. It's how much stunt dice you stunt points you get if you get a stunt. It's um, also if there's a tie on opposed checks, that's the um, that's the the equalizer or the, the dice, which is like okay, that person got five, that person got four, the person got five, won the challenge between each other. Same for initiatives, it's the stunt dice which you use for um, separating people and separating results. Um, 
and it's also works for your spells it works for everything right across the board it's continuity it works it's a solid system from ground up um and i know that um there's more parts like i'm, I'm really looking forward to reading more of the expanse because the expanse is the latest edition like it came out i think it was last year we came in so this is a few years old now and that's the latest so i'm like Let's go through the ones, but I'm really looking forward to the expanse. Really looking forward to the expanse because I know it's got different systems on top of this great solid basic core mechanics. Um, I'm also looking forward to ship combat. <laughs> and modern age, because it'll have vehicles and other bits and pieces and other like building upon a solid core is amazing. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Seeing how they've built upon this really solid system. Um, like if you have a look at Call of Cthulhu, that's built upon the BRP, the basic role-playing system. And it's really well done because they've built upon a good solid core. So I'm looking at other, like the, the ones that have built upon this. So that's me for this week. I'm enthusiastic. I'm certainly going to look into possibly running some stuff from this. Um, I think a good pirate game, yes. Um, I know a great pirate campaign. Um, which is the Skull and Shackles, which is um, Pathfinder 1st Edition. It's a grand, massive campaign. It'd work for this, because you just convert all the stats from the from like the, the abilities, 18s and 14s, 15s. It's all convertible with that same table from your character creation. Yes, you're going to lose your feats, but you could also put in um, stunts, which is specifically for pirates and stuff like that. So you could really tailor the stunts to your setting as well, which I think is really important. And what I would probably do when doing a setting is speaking to your characters, going like, okay, what works for the setting? Do you want to include any more stunts? What stunts would what, what stunts would work? What stunts would cool? Swinging off chandeliers, doing other things like that, cool. Um, and um, I think it'd work really well. I don't know how I'd add like our donation dice system how it would work with that but yeah I think doing maybe a plus minus one on a dice roll to try to get a double to trigger a stunt but then you get stunts all the time but yeah I think it worked really well good pirate campaign city based campaign it does mention the actually pirate campaign it does mention the um, the Freeport um, which Green Ronan also do um, so Freeport campaign they have and the, which is also the Skull and Shackles base of operations pirate campaign. Um, <laughs> it's actually mentioned here. Um, I just, yeah. In like how to convert settings and how to work with different things. Everything's here. Everything works. Um, and as I said, it's really cool. The, it's well thought out. It works. All the products are good quality. The only thing maybe I don't like is... The, or most, maybe the only thing lacking, it doesn't have like the bookmark. Other than that, great printing quality, the GM material stuff, like the, the tracker, um, whiteboard. So it's, it's like that material where you can just use whiteboard markers for the turn tracker. It's just great. Just so simple. Um, and it has the note about the grenades with its own feet and how they work. And it just works. Um, it's got rules for um, flying combat, for driving, and it's, it's yeah. There's so much stuff that just works. Um, so that's me for this week. I've said that probably about three times now. <laughs> so go check it out yourself. Um, this is something that, yeah. I, I do say I highly recommend a lot of this stuff. This is one of the ones which surprised me, or how good it is. I like so many of these systems. Um, so many of the systems. Um, for the turn tracker, this could probably be used for anything. Um, although it'd be really expensive just to buy that turn tracker. <laughs> because you're getting a GM screen, um, three panel GM screen, which you probably, which is very much specific for Fantasy Age. Um, with their rules. Oh. And unless you're using it. So if you are playing this around the table, um, playing fantasy area around table, I would say this is a great accessory and not one which is 
uh, like too like not one where the price is absorbent and stupid. I think this is like the usefulness is there for this product for the GM's kit. Um, for the other stuff, the companion adds quite a bit. It adds more classes. Or, sorry. It doesn't add more classes. You still won't be doing three. It adds subclasses. Um, so you swashbuckle and things like that. It adds sub stosh, sorry, adds those. It adds different spell um, focuses as well. So it adds um, your death domain. So you can start moving into necromancers and stuff. Um, and just rules for um, chases and other things like that. So it's a solid content from what I've read. Um, there's a lot in there. So it's I'd say that would add to it. That would work. Um, and I've noted that uh, I think Modern Age also has a companion to it as well. So I do have the core book for that. I'm probably going to get the companion just to see what it's in that in comparison. Um, but it's a nice addition. And um, I think, yeah, the systems work. Everything works. Uh, which is a surprise. As I said the only thing that really gets me is the fact that there's um, no bookmark, which is a minor inconvenience. It's just something that I've noticed that a lot of the current stock of board, like the nice high quality ones, they have bookmarks or some even multiple stuff like Zweihander um, is really nice quality. Even Morkborg has bookmark which was a surprise. And it's got this demonic writing along the bookmark, which is, of course, because it's a mock book. But, um, yeah. Have fun, enjoy your role-playing. Um, if you're looking for a homebrew setting, um, this is up there. If you're, if you're playing with a group that's used to D20 systems, such as Pathfinder, Dungeons & Dragons, 3rd um, edition, 3.5, or 5th edition, this is a this would feel familiar. It would work. It allows for quite expensive role playing, and it doesn't rely on feats. And feats and exceptions to rules, etc., is kind of my feeling of the death of that of that system, at least of fifth edition D and D. Um, you could write your own spells. There's not many spells in this. Maybe a little bit of a downfall. There's not many spells, but there's a, what there is would work, and you can always put in more. So I'm just, I'm, I've got a frog, which is just outside the window, and the window's open, and he's lo he's just going off right now. Um, so yeah, this would work for different settings, and you could build add to it for different settings. As I said, more spells, um, more talents um, that are specific for it. You could just put in whatever you want, um, and even more stunts specifically for your things. And it's built for that. It's built to be modded. It's built. To, it's designed to be modded, unlike game systems, again, like Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, which is not built to be modded, and everyone mods it. Because they don't like the rules, so they modify it and modify it and modify it so much that it works for them, but there's so many exceptions to the exceptions to the exceptions that it gets complicated. This is a solid base, um, where everything is the same thing, uses the same rules, start, for, start with a solid base and work up. It makes things so much easier. It really does. I've done homebrews before where I've I've done homebrews where I've taken two different systems and put them together. <laughs> it, it was hard. It was very hard. This would work, just work. It would just work. Um, so have a great day. Enjoy your role playing. Um, so was, you can't go for a system that you need to modify. All, yeah. Systems that you need to modify all the time, constantly, just for playability, uh, is a pain. Um, this is a solid system. And if you're going to be modifying for your own setting, start with something that's solid and work up. Because it works. It makes things makes your job so much easier. Um, that's why I love basic role playing from Chaosism. Um, because it's a great solid system. I like classless systems. So if you're going for a classless level of system, Chaosism with basic role playing. If you want a class based system with levels, if that's what's more familiar for you, this. I think that's I think that would be the differentiation. The class and levels. Um both of them are I would say really really good quality products. Just yeah. 
<laughs> that's, my, that's my only way of going, okay, try this one or try this one, because I think they're both up there. They're certainly both at the top. Um, this is this has impressed me already for this year. And we've got modern age, we've got expanses on top of that. And we may go or even further back to Dragon Age. Maybe. <laughs> um, although I might see, if I'm going to go that way, I might speak to someone who is a Dragon Age specialist. So no one who's in who does role playing, and I might try to do that. So um, Green Ronan, if you if you if you're listening, um, I'm like that might be like just speak to me and yeah yeah. Um, <laughs> but again, that's me. I'm, I've been trying to sign off for like 20 minutes now, so I'm signing off now. <laughs> Thank you for coming for chat. Thank you for talking to me, bringing up ideas. And yes, I am talking to chat. That's what that's what a lot of this is. If you're just watching on YouTube. <laughs> um, so take care, everyone. Enjoy your well-playing. And there's more games out there than just one. So they tell lots of different stories, and they can tell them very well. So check them all out, because that's all we're here. Bye. <laughs>